Now, the second way to work with multiple rows is to use a grouping. That's very similar to SQL. So we can group our data frame by a particular condition. Therefore, we call the f.groupby and in here we can specify columns or string expressions as well. So the first thing would be we group by the date, which doesn't make too much sense because we have one row for each date, so we will have as many uh, as many groups as we would have dates. And if we group by the date, we can also we get a grouped data frame and on that we can apply aggregation functions. For example, let's say the max of the close price. And then we say dot show. So the group by groups our rows into groups with all the rows in one group having the same value of the grouping condition. Now let's go ahead and use group by with a column expression because grouping by date doesn't make too much sense. So we say date, uh, df and then column date. And we don't want to use the date directly, but we want to group by the year. And the year function is basically a date function which is specified or defined in the SQL functions object that we saw before. So all of these functions are still imported. So that's why we can use it here right away. So we extract the year from the date and then we group by this condition. So all of the rows with one particular year, say 2019, end up being in the same group. Now the result of this is a grouped data frame and on this group data frame we can apply aggregations now. And we can either use an aggregation directly like we did here. Some of them are defined on the group data frame class directly. Or we can also call the dot ag for aggregation, apply aggregation functions. And the within the ag function or method on a group data frame, we can specify a number, so an entire list of expressions. And we know how to use expressions already. So we could say we want to have the max close and the average close, for example. So in that case, we would end up with a data frame consisting of the first column being the year extracted from the date. So that's the group key. And then two columns. One would be the max close price we have seen in the entire year. And the second one being the average over all the close prices from that year. And if we say dot show now, it will print this to the console. Hey, and sorry for interrupting your learning. If you would like to become a pro level Spark engineer within a short period of time, I would like to point you to my individual coaching program, which you can find in my academy. Now I will work with you over the course of 12 weeks as if we were colleagues in a professional working setup, meaning we will have weekly sessions and in between I will ask you to complete assignments and we are going to do code reviews together. Also, you will get access to all of the video courses that exist in my academy and you can ask me any question you have about Apache Spark. Within this 12 weeks, I will teach you everything I know about Apache Spark from 10 years of experience as a freelance data engineer. In this academy, you can also find many video courses, for example, on PySpark and Spark with Scala, also an in-depth course on understanding Spark internals. All right, let's waste no time and continue on the course. Now let's execute this one so that you can get an understanding of what's happening. So it's very similar to what we would do in SQL. Also here we are applying a transformation in the group by condition. So in order to get a column name for that, Spark will use the, will generate a string representation of the transformation again. We can as well use an alias here as well, so that we can say, for example, um, we could say, for example, after the year, this entire column should have an, have an alias being year so that it would print year in that first column here <coughs> and then for 1990 1990 for example 
we could say or we could see that we have that the max close price for apple in this year was 1.69 and the average close price was 1.34 and that would be like these aggregations would be generated for each of the years we can see in our data all right we can as as we have seen with sorting we can also group by multiple such uh, transformations or grouping conditions so we could group by year and then secondarily group by month and then we would get two columns of the for the grouping so for example after after specifying our first grouping condition we could say month extracted from the f date and then we add an alias as well say month so that will so our data frame would be grouped first by year and secondly by month and then we do our aggregation so max close and average close and now i can break this up a little bit because it's getting quite long here So that would work as well. And if I execute this one, yeah, we the groups are smaller because we get the max and the average closing prices per month of the year now. Also for these aggregations, these are column expressions as well. Um, we can also add an alias. For example, we say max close and here we add an alias and say average close because spark also indicates here how the values in the column have been arrived or derived now we are grouping by year and then months so for 202010 we see one row here for month 7 so which is july and also for month 12 but basically all of the month from 2010 are present as groups in our group data frame. Now you may be asking yourself which aggregation functions can I use within the dot .ag method and that as you would have guessed probably is also documented in the SQL functions and if we go to this function reference I told you before that these are basically grouped these functions and here one group is the aggregate functions so here you can look up whatever uh, aggregation functions exist so for example we have used the average so it calculates the average over the column uh, we could also s collect all values into a list for example or we could count them or yeah we could take the first so there are many many aggregation functions also the max is here um, so if you would like to implement some statistics on groups, I would yeah, advise you to go here and check whether there is an aggregation function you can use most. So basically 99.9% .9 of the use cases you may have to implement are yeah, feasible by applying these predefined aggregation functions. All right, so we have used average we have used max and average and we can also use for example sum of all the let's say open prices and apply an alias alias sum open and execute this thing again to see the result now in assignment i would like to ask you to group your data by year and then by months and find the max closing prices the average closing prices and then sort the result by the highest closing prices we have seen in a month and that's basically after the grouping we would basically add a sort that's how it how we can do it and we can use these columns so we can for example sort by df and now it has a column which is the max close price and by this we want to sort in a descending order and don't forget this parenthesis here um, so that we can see in which month 
the closing prices have been highest. So we see the first 20 rows and that's what I would like you to do in the assignment of yeah, this lecture. <clears throat> so we get an error. Um, a column or function parameter with name max close cannot be resolved. Cannot be resolved. And the problem is that this aggregation is not present once we call the sort here in the DF. So I mistakenly tried to reference max close from specifying the DF, but rather we should use the column because the, the max column is not really part of the DF yet. So we haven't stored a reference in DF. So we want we wanted to specify that we wanted that we're looking for a column called max close and we want to sort by this column in a descending order. That's why we use the call function, not df, and then the, the syntax with the um, brackets here. And Spark will resolve this max column by referencing this alias and then deriving, okay, okay that's, that's coming from the max over the group and so on. So that's something interesting to keep in mind or important to keep in mind also during your assignment. So please um, notify that in or notice that in your assignment as well. All right, so now it has finished and yeah, it's it's sorted by the max close price. The second highest was in January 2020 and so on. So we can see we have some basic aggregations and we can also sort on the results.